Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now before there was Google, before Google dominated almost everything we do online, before even Googling it was a kind of a verb, I'll Google it and find out, there was another search engine called Alta Vista. And at its time, it was the world's most popular search engine. Now, I actually happened to be working in the company that was responsible to Alta Vista during that period. I wasn't directly involved because it was a company of many thousands of people. However, I do know a bit about the history of Alta Vista. And so really kind of, first of all, as a kind of a memorial to Alta Vista, all that it did and all that it achieved, I want to talk a bit about that today. But also I want to talk about the technology because there are some interesting things that they did in Alta Vista that basically makes internet searching possible even today. They laid the foundations for everything that we do today, including in Google search, including in things like Gmail. It was all kind of done back then. So if that interests you and you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the way uh, internet search engine works is like this. There's a thing called a spider. And it's called a spider, of course, because we're dealing with the World Wide Web. And the spider goes out onto the web, it visits a web page, it kind of reads it all and sends it back to a server. Then it looks at the links, picks the next link and follows on to the next web page, reads that web page, sends it back to the server, follows the next link and it crawls in that fashion all over the web. Now Alta Vista had a web crawler that was able to start crawling the internet. This is back in 1995. That was when it was first launched and of course it was in preparation development during the year of 1995. And when it came out, it was an instant hit. I mean, within a few years, it was getting millions of millions of kind of search requests happening every single day. Now that all might sound very obvious for what we do today in the world of Google and Bing and DuckDuckGo and so on, but back in 1995, this was quite revolutionary. Now let's talk about a quick history of Alta Vista. It was made by this company called DEC, Digital Equipment Corporation, who were very famous for their mini computers, their VAX line of mini computers. Before that, the PDP range of computers, including the PDP 11, which was very, very popular. And then after the VAX range came the Alpha range. Now these machines could run basically two operating systems. You could run VMS on it. And I plan to do a video kind of remembering VMS as well, uh, just like I'm doing this one for Alta Vista. And you could also run commercial versions of Unix, which were called Altrix and after that OSF1 that all ran on these uh, DEC machines. Now by 1998, Alta Vista was so popular, it was running on 20 DEC Alpha servers, which of course today compared to what a data center, for example, what Google have or Amazon have, you know, that's quite small. But again, remember this is the, the end of the 90s, where there was 20 DEC Alpha machines, they had 130 gigabytes of RAM each, a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and it was 64-bit Unix on there running this uh, search engine, which was, of course, called the Alta Vista search engine. Now, one of the other big things that Alta Vista did was they put advertising on the website. And I remember internally in the company, this was a big discussion because people were saying, hold on, when I come to the Alta Vista website, I'm not seeing digital being promoted. I'm seeing an advert for, for Microsoft or for some other company. And we think this might be confusing. People actually said that at the time. Of course, today we live in a world of advertising where there are advertising on the left and the right and the top and in the middle, and there's advertising everywhere. But back in that day, you went to the website and actually to have an advert for someone else's services seemed quite strange, but it was very popular because during the late 90s, uh, Alta Vista was able to generate $50 million of revenue just through advertising. And this is, of course, way back then in 1998. So it wasn't the big money industry that we see today, but even so, $50 million per year is an impressive figure for way back then. And part of my own personal history, there was a point around 1997 where they thought to take Alta Vista and make it a completely separate company, not only offering search, offering a search SDK, which I'll talk about a bit in a moment, but then offering another range of other internet focused products, including email servers and email solutions, which is where the work that I was doing came into being. And actually I did have, I've never kept it, I really wish I'd kept it. I actually had a letter from the uh, company saying, you are gonna be part of the new Alta Vista company, you will be given shares. And there was all these details in there, but unfortunately that never happened because in 1999, DEC basically went bankrupt and the company got sold to Compaq. Compaq got bought then by Hewlett Packard 
Alta Vista itself got sold off to another company, which eventually got sold off to another company, which eventually got bought by Yahoo. And then they kind of all went downhill, very much like Yahoo has done in many ways. And in 2013, the Alta Vista uh, brand, the Alta Vista website basically died. Now you might be surprised to hear this, but it's actually quite hard for a computer to search for text. So we might have, let's say, a web page. Let's say it's a, a story uh, about, for example, orange crops, and you want to search for the word orange. Well, a computer in its barest form, how it does that is it looks for the first letter. Is it the letter O? No. Let's move on to the next letter. Is it the letter O? No. And it will keep going down the, the sort of sequence of characters, which we call a string, until it hits the letter O. And then it'll say, ah, oh, right, is the next letter the letter R? Yes, it is. Oh, good. This could be the word orange. And then it kind of tries to find the word orange in that sequence of uh, characters. Now that, that might be okay when you have one page, you know, we all kind of do, you know, control F or whatever, find in page, and we kind of look for something in a Word document in a web browser, and the computer can find it quite quickly. But imagine when you've got a million pages, two million pages, 10 million pages, 100 million pages of text covering news stories and text and fashion and, and, and all, you know, everything, you know, how are you going to search all of those uh, individual pages just by looking one character at a time? Well, you can't. So what a, a search engine has to do, what in fact a database of any kind has to do, if it's doing text searching, has to create an index. Now what the index does is it splits up the page into words. Now words is basically any sequence of characters that are separated by a space or maybe punctuation, because at the end of a sentence you might have a full stop, you might have a comma, you might have quote marks. So you can basically go through the text and say, this is a word, the word orange, computer, tree, dog, cat, fish, you know, you can go through the, the thing and make up a list of words. And then what you can do is for each of those words, you can say the word orange appears in document number 27, web page number 27 that the spider has sent back. The word orange also appears in web page number 329 and web page 1427. And then when you do a search for orange, rather than having to go through all those millions of web pages, it looks down its list for the word orange and says, aha, I know that's on this page, this page, this page, this page, and this page, and then it can very quickly give you back the results saying these are the web pages that have the word orange in them. However, what do you do if you want to look for two words side by side? So for example, I want to look for orange tree. Well, what the computer does normally what it would do, it would look down its orange list and say it's on these pages like this. Then it would look up the word tree and it would have a list of different pages, but some of those pages would be the same page. So, ah, this page, number 333, has got the word orange in it and the word tree in it. So now we can say this page has got the word orange tree or the phrase orange tree on it. Now, the problem with that approach is that, for example, if I wrote a, an article about orange paint, for example, and talking about how a contract has been signed between one company and another. It's a news item, you know, between this company and this company, and they're going to make orange paint. You know, fantastic. And then at the bottom it says, oh, don't forget to check out our new article on how you should trim your tree in the garden for summer. Well, hold on a second. Now I'm, I've looked for the word orange, but actually the word tree is also on that page, but they're not related to each other at all. They are completely disparate di bits of information. And in fact, one is really just a link or a, or a piece of information about some other piece of information, some other web page. So returning a result with the word orange tree with that web page would not be very helpful. So what Alta Vista did is that while it indexes all of those words, orange, fish, dog, cat, computer, keyboard, all the words that you can, you can get, it would also note down the location that it appeared in the page. And this is absolutely vital. So if you knew that the word orange was the 200th word on a page, then when you look for the word tree, when you look down your list, if you see that orange is on word 200, but tree is actually word 800, way down at the bottom of the page, you can say, hold on, these two things aren't related to each other. This is not about orange trees or an, an orange tree or a big orange tree or you know the big, beautiful orange tree. They're not related. This is something way down. So by storing the location as well as the, in, the word itself, now you can actually start to see whether things are related. So when you might see the word orange at word 200 and then tree at word 201, now it says, aha, 
This is now the phrase orange tree. They are related to each other. Even if I say something like uh, orange fruit tree, then orange would be at word 200, fruit would be at 201, and tree would be at 202. I can say, well, that's close enough that this is about orange tree. They've put an extra adjective in there, orange fruit tree. So I'm just gonna drop the word fruit there and I'm still gonna be able to return a relatively good result that's relevant to the search query because orange and tree are very, very close to each other. So AltaVista actually launched an SDK that you could buy from uh, digital and you could use it inside of your enterprise, inside of your business to actually index and search all of your documents. Now I actually worked for another company that actually used AltaVista's SDK. I won't say which is, because I don't know whether it's private information or whatever. It was, of course, 20 years ago. But the point is, is that a lot of companies were starting to use this searching technology internally because it really was revolutionizing their access to their own information. Because rather than having this old system of just an index with the word orange and an index with the word tree, now we had this way of combining them together and seeing whether they were related to each other by position. And actually that was gonna be part of the business plan that AltaVista as a separate company was going to use, which was to generate these internal kits for people, big businesses to use inside their uh, databases, inside their companies. And as I mentioned, it's not only about Google search, it's also about Gmail, because there was a, an idea inside of uh, DEC at the time, inside of the Alta Vista team, to convert this for actually indexing and searching email. And the code name for that project was actually called Pachyderm, in, of course, you know, do with elephants. And if you find that interesting, a bit of history about Pachyderm, what happened with that, okay, then let me know in the comments and I'll think about making another video about it. Okay, so there you have it. So the key about searching for text is not just to look for it one letter at a time, it's to have an index, and that index also have a word position inside of it so that you can tell whether two words are close to each other. And doing that, you can now do searches over millions and millions of web pages and get back the results that you want that are relevant to your search. Okay, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Please do check out the Speedtest G channel, which also has a Twitter account, Speedtest underbar G. And I suppose that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.